All right, it is 1.32, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far and I hope everyone is safe. Again, my name is Larry Carter. I am a partnership manager with the United States Census Bureau and we're here to talk census. You're gonna shape your future and you start here. As you all may know, the census is mandated by the constitution. So every, April, every 10 years on April 1st, we count the population that's called Census Day. This is the nation's largest peacetime mobilization. All the information we collect is strictly confidential by law as protected by the Constitution. Respondents will have the option to complete their form online, by phone, or by mail. This helps us direct more than $675 billion annually in federal funding to different communities. The census data is also used for businesses, governments, and civic organizations to inform their decisions. Why is the 2020 census so important? Well, first, we have congressional representation. Your legislative boundaries are controlled by census data based off the population. And not just that, but public funding that follows the numbers. This is also an opportunity for you to get your community counted to make sure all the resources are coming to your community um, that is needed. When you think about community block grants, census data informs those decisions where they go. We're really focusing on our hard to count populations. And you can see from the list here on your screen, um, these are some of our hard to count populations because they're harder to reach just because different reasons, whether um, they're more transient or the distrust of government or uh, not engaged in a civic activity that is happening. So some of those populations are highly mobile persons LGBTQ persons, uh, people with low incomes, non-speak English speakers, persons experiencing homelessness, and there's a host of others. What we want you to know is your responses are safe and, and secure. The 2020 census is safe, secure, and protected by federal law. It's protected under Title 13 of the U.S. Code. The Census Bureau cannot release any identifiable, identifiable information to indiv about individuals, households, or businesses, not even to law enforcement agencies, including ICE, the FBI, and a host of others, the IRS as well. By law, your responses cannot be used against you. And every one, every one of our census employees takes an oath uh, to protect your personal data, and that comes with a five-year prison sentence as well as a $250,000 fine. I don't know about you, but I don't have an extra $250,000 or five years to spend in prison. So we definitely take it very, very seriously. Your online responses are safe from hacking and other cyber threats. What you can expect in the mail so we started out on the week of March 12th, we sent out the initial invitation to respond. So um, that's gonna have um, your 12 digit code that a lot, a lot of people are hearing about that you're gonna need to respond. So you, you would have gotten that between the 12th and the 20th. And then on the 16th, we sent out a reminder letter. And then earlier, uh, late last week, we sent out a reminder postcard. And April 8th through the 16th, we'll send out a reminder letter with a paper questionnaire. And then April 20th through the 27th, uh, we'll send a final reminder postcard. This is what you can expect to see. Um, this is your letter that you'll get in the mail as well as the reminders and the postcards.
The questionnaire asks nine questions. What we're asking is how many people are living or staying in your home on April 1st, 2020? Whether the home is owned or rented, we'll ask your telephone number, the name, sex, age, date of birth, race, and Hispanic origin of each person in the household. And there will also be a relationship question for each person related to the first person, which is the central person filling out the form. Who to count? We want you to count every person living in your home. We want you to count roommates. Oh. Let me see, can you hear me? It's, how is this? I heard my mic is going in and out. Is this better? Okay, sorry about that. Little technical difficulties. Oh, go back. All right, we want you to count every person that is staying in your home. We want you to count young children. We want you to count newborns. Anyone who is, is renting a space in your home, it doesn't matter. Even if it's the cousin that's couch surfing, you wanna make sure you're counting people who stay at your home most of the time. And then we have an operation called group quarters. And that's for people who live in shelters in healthcare facilities, prisons, and correctional facilities. On-campus college students will be counted in group quarters as well as military and people living in RV parks, hotels, and transitory locations. We wanna make sure every person is counted. We're asking that you self-respond. Um, as we all know, uh, since we are having this event virtually, the current uh, status of our country right now, we're asking everybody to respond online in your home where it's safe. Uh, you can self respond, it'll take, depending on how many people are in your household, it could take 15 to 20 to 30 minutes, just depending on how many people are in your household. But it's a quick 15 minute thing you can do on your smartphone, your tablet, on your computer. It's quick and easy. The questionnaire, it takes about 10 minutes to complete. So um, it's safe, secure, confidential. Your information is private and protected. And your responses will help direct billions of dollars in federal funds to your local community for your schools, roads, and other per public services. And when you log on to 2020census.gov, you'll see this sign where it says start questionnaire and you can click on that and go ahead and get started. Responding is easier than ever before. The self response is online, by phone, or you can do it by mail. You can respond anytime, anywhere, and from any device. You can respond in English or in one of the 12 selected languages. The website and the call center went live on March 12th. So you can call in and a live customer service rep is available um, from all of the 13 languages from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. These are the different languages that the questionnaire is available. These are the 12 non-English languages that the questionnaire is available. And we realize that those 13 languages don't make up our whole community in the United States. That's why we have 59 non-English language guides. And those languages are on the screen here. We wanna make sure that it's accessible for every single person. Non-response follow-up. That is our operation that comes after self-response. It's going to start May 28th through August 14th right now. But understand those dates might change just depending on what's happening um, in the current environment. But as of right now, our dates are May 28th to August 14th. Non-response follow-up is when people will come and knock on your door 
to get you to respond to the census. After we've sent out all of those letters and reminders, if you still haven't responded, we're gonna send someone out to the door to get you to respond. How you can identify a census taker. They'll have an official 2020 census bag. They'll have a census bureau issued iPhone. They'll also have their badge. Their badge should always be present. And it'll have, it'll be an official badge where their name, their photograph, and the department's watermark will be on and an expiration date. Also important to, to note, you'll never be asked for your full social security number, banking account information, or partisanship. We are a nonpartisan bureau. These are the different phases that we've been working through in the census. So uh, we were in the awareness stage. We wanted to get the word out, bring attention to the 2020 census and let people know that it's approaching and to educate them. We're currently in the motivation stage, which our motivation stage is going to be extended from March 13th until May 28th. We really want to motivate people to get them out and drive them to do the self-response. Now, this has been updated that self-response will be available until July 31st. And that's an extension because before it would cut off once non-response follow-up started. However, we are extending self-response into July just to give everybody a chance to respond where they're comfortable in their home. And of course you have the reminder phase starting. Um, it's gonna start on the 28th, as I said before, and go through to August 14th. And that's when people are gonna come out to really remind people just to fill out your census form. Here we can do it right here at the door. And then we go to phase four, which is our thank you campaign. And that'll start in September of 2020 and beyond. And we'll just inform the public uh, that we've completed our count and kind of thank our partners who have helped us along the way. And up live now, we have the 2020 response rate challenge. So that's a map that's going to track the response rates throughout the United States. So you can go on and see live the results as they come in with self response. And you can kind of look at the national um, the national response rate and kind of compare it to your local response rate. This is really helpful uh, to target areas that need to really get the self-response to increase so we know where to go. Um, and, and it helps our partners as well. They can kind of see where people are responding in areas where people aren't responding. So they can kind of um, like the grassroots effort to get out into the community because our partners know their communities best. So we really lean on them in these times to reach out to who they serve and their community members to really get them the response and help them understand the importance of the census. And the 2020 census is a population count. Um, like I said before, it's easy. You can respond online by phone or by mail. It's safe. Your information is protected by law and it's important. Responses help determine community funding and congressional representation. The rise of the digital age. So we're facing a lot of different tools that we're using right now. So we're really working the digital marketing and advertising tools to really engage people a little bit more. Um, and we're using our partners also. Um, when you think about social media, when you think about uh, your Facebook and Instagrams and different things of that nature, we're tapping into those type of tools to really engage people. We're also leveraging our partners. So our partners are uh, using our messages that we've created and they're available on the 2020census.gov website. Um, they're Instagram posts, their uh, Twitter posts already made out and, and there to be copied and pasted and used by our partners to really engage the greater public. And right now, um, there, there's some misinformation 
and disinformation. Um, so we're really working through that right now to really reach the public and get the correct information out to people and really influence the public to self-respond. That is the most important thing. Um, some, some disinformation is deliberate to confuse people so those messages are being spread through those same platforms like social media as we i talked about on the last slide so it's really important that we get out there ahead of those messages and make sure we're getting the correct information out to the community and again um, trust and safety it's it's been a big thing that we've really been working on the spread of misinformation and disinformation about the 2020 census is something we're actively fighting. We want the public to have the correct information so they can participate in the census and shape their future and the future of their community. We are continuously monitoring to see what is out there in the news. We scan the 24 a news cycle uh, via traditional media sources like television, radio, print, and online media platforms. Um, we're also working to engage on the ground with grassroots communities. We're using the web, we're monitoring the web to see what's popping up, um, what social sites are saying. And then we're also, um, we have a live tips line for the Census Bureau, and that number is 1-800-923-8282. Uh, and you can always feel free to email us at rumors at census.gov. Anything that you hear um, that doesn't sound quite right, you can go ahead and email that up to us so that we can be aware because we're trying to keep our eyes and ears open, but we need partners like you all to help us with that. How can you help? So um, we have really been reaching out, as I said before, throughout really in this time leaning on our partners. Um, a rumor and me a message board or a group claiming the information you've provided publicly. If you're seeing public information that's incorrect, I can give you an, an example of that. Um, I use Nextdoor uh, in my community, my neighborhood. So Nextdoor is a community app and uh, someone posted that Fill out your census form because that's attached to the stimulus money. That's incorrect. Your information is not shared with anyone. Your data is not shared with anyone. So I, I definitely went ahead and, and took steps to go ahead and, and use our talking points to rectify that information. That's not being shared. So that's just an example of misinformation. Even if that would motivate people, we don't want to motivate people with misinformation. So if you see any of those type of things, please reach out and send us an email so we can know and we can kind of counteract it to make sure we're on top of it. How organizations can help us. You can raise awareness and motivate people to respond by using your social media and using the hashtag 2020 census. Um, host a webinar much like this one. If you have newsletters, uh, you can go to the 2020census.gov website and pull uh, and just copy and paste right from our materials that we already have and just embed it into your newsletter. Postcards, flyers, um, posts on your websites. Also, we have a program called Statistics in Schools, uh, which is a curriculum based around statistics, but also teaching about the census. You can join the conversation online. Again, the hashtag is 2020 census. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Also, if you are with an organization that you feel would be a great partner or you want a partner, you can go to uh, www.2020census.gov um, and become a partner. Also, um, you can email myself as well. Thank you. Are there any questions?
Hi, um, this is uh, Laura Gerson. I'm an AU staff member, and um, I wanted to thank you so much for that uh, really interesting presentation, uh, Larry. I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more about what sort of outreach strategies you guys are using um, for LGBTQ folks in particular. Definitely. Um, so we have a campaign set aside for LGBTQ+. Plus. I work on that portfolio. So we basically focus in on organizations uh, that work with LGBTQ plus people. Um, my, I myself, I was um, with the task force at Creating Change Conference. So we've been showing up at conferences. Uh, we also were at PFLAG's conference um, in November. We've been working with different organizations uh, to do webinars to engage um, as well as uh, the Center for Black Equity. Uh, we've been working with, well, unfortunately, a lot of the Black Prides have been canceled uh, because of the current climate, however, but we've been working with different organizations to make sure uh, we're reaching out to all facets of the LGBTQ plus community. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. If folks have any questions, they can go ahead and put them in the Q&A or in the chat uh, functions of the webinar. And, and one thing I wanted to add while we're waiting for questions that I think is super important about this decennial for LGBTQ plus people is the relationship question. This is the first time on a census that uh, same-sex couples will be able to identify married or unmarried. Um, that's super important to get out because it's the first time it's there. So uh, people might not be as aware about it, but we really want to make sure that we collect that data point because that that's a really important data point to show how the community is growing, where we are, and things of that nature. And let me just explain how that question works. Um, so the first person will fill out the census form. And when they add the second person, um, it'll ask, how are you related to person one? Uh, and then you can identify as same-sex couples unmarried, same-sex couple married, and so on and so forth. So um, that's really something that hasn't been there that is now. Well, I think your presentation may have been so comprehensive that nobody has any questions. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much um, for that presentation. We really appreciate your time today uh, coming to AIDS Watch and speaking to all of our participants. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. And, um, and when we talk about uh, organizations helping people, individuals can help too because there's nothing better than a trusted voice. So someone you know, whether it's a, a family member, a close friend, just reminding them that April 1st is Census Day, have you completed your census form? Because people, people listen to people they know. So once they trust you, um, they might have a couple of questions. And definitely if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, but that's all I have for now, sorry. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much. Um, everyone go and do your census. <laughs> hey, everyone. Sorry, this is Andy also with the Larian census. I'm going to drop in this chat space here um, the link to our outreach material. So you can go and peruse and kind of pull some information from there as you go and discuss the census with your with your networks and your and your friends.
Well, in that case, thank you all so much for attending. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Take care, everyone.